General Sani Abacha was a prominent Nigerian military officer and a politician who served as a de facto president of Nigeria from 1993 until he died in 1998. Hi, I'm Obehi Ewanfo, the author of the storytelling series for small businesses and content creators. In Obehi Podcast, we talk about the power of your story, your narrative, and why you should own your voice. Whether you are a small business owner, a content entrepreneur, or you simply want to build your influence, storytelling is probably going to be your best instrument to connect with your audience. So join the awakened few who are owning their voices. Now let's get started with today's episode. Most of the younger generation of Nigerians who did not directly suffer from the brutality of European colonialism, Abacha was only 70 years old when Nigeria gained her independence from Britain. And no one could have predicted that he was going to be the head of that country. Ahaji Abacha Maiduguri, his father, is said to have served as the president of Northern Trader Amalgamated Union, a unified organization encompassing all businesses and trade unions in the northern region. Notably, it is believed that Ahaji Abacha played a crucial role in negotiating a more favorable trade agreement for northern traders during the 1950s when they faced a trade monopoly of Syria and Lebanese traders. And of his mother, very little is known about her. The wife and former first lady of Sani Abacha is Hajiya Miriam. She was born in Kadunan on March 4, 1947. She is a native of Borno State, the daughter of Ahaji Sheikh Mohammed Jida. As of the origin of General Sani Abacha, he is from the Kanuri ethnic group. The Kanuri people are a large African ethnic group, primarily residing in the territory once occupied by the Kane Borno Empire, spanning Niger, Nigeria, Sudan, Libya, and Cameroon. The term Kanuri encompasses various subgroups and dialect groups, and so might differentiate themselves from the broad Kanuri identity. Early Childhood Sani Abacha's early life and childhood period before his political career are not extensively documented. However, here is some general information about his background. Sani Abacha was born on September 20, 1943, in Kano, Nigeria. Growing up, Abacha experienced his life in a region with a rich cultural heritage, although General Sani Abacha eventually rose to lead the largest military in Africa, he may have been very quiet, if not outrightly a reserved child growing up in Kano. While specific details about his childhood are limited, it is known that Abacha received his early education in Kano. He later pursued a military career, joining the Nigeria Army in 1963. His involvement in the military marked the beginning of his journey towards becoming a prominent figure in Nigerian politics, his rise in the Nigerian military. Now, if you understand that politics is sometimes nothing more than the struggle over control of people and resources, then you should know that the few who want to control other people need to devise a way to do this effectively. One of the most successful strategies for this has remained divide and conquer. For example, check out The Art of War by Shanzun, a brilliant Chinese military general, strategist, and philosopher who lived in 250 BC. For more than 4,000 years, the tactics of divide and conquer has proven to be a powerful military strategy. The approach has been utilized by various historical power, including the Egyptians, Julius Caesar in his military campaign, the British Empire, and much more. In the era of colonialism, Nigeria was perfectly partitioned into three regions, which closely aligned with the territory inhabited by the largest ethnic group. And for every given occasion, the line of division among these different regions have been exacerbated by the colonialists so they could control the people. 
and what is known in Nigeria and many other African countries as tribalism, religious tension, and the North and South dichotomy are perfectly explainable within this ancient principle of population control and manipulation. In the north of Nigerians are Hausa and Fulani people who are predominantly Muslim. The Yoruba people are in the west largely Christians and the Igbo people in the east who are equally predominantly Christian. However, in 1967, after a series of events, the eastern region seceded from Nigeria and established the Republic of Biafra. The resulting civil war lasted until 1917, leading to the death of over a million people. It was during this 1967 conflict that Abacha assumed the rank of captain. Over the next three years, he steadily advanced through the rank of the Nigeria army, progressing from platoon and battalion commander to becoming the commander of the training department within the 2nd Infantry Division. By 1969, Abacha had achieved the rank of Major. In 1972, following the conclusion of the war and the restoration of national border as one Nigeria, Abacha was promoted to the position of Lieutenant Colonel. During the subsequent year, he received further promotion, attaining the rank of Colonel in 1975 and Brigadier in 1980. All these were preparing him as he aspired for more power in the military and more control of Nigerian people and their resources. Just so we might clear ourselves of the illusion that Abacha suddenly rise to power in Nigeria, consider that he received a lot of training from different prestigious military and tactical institutions both in Nigeria and overseas. All these are to prove the point that it is difficult to rise above mediocrity and ordinariness until you first refine yourself. Abacha educational journey in the UK commenced at the most defined official cadet training in Adeshot in 1963, followed by his attendance at the School of Infantry in Westminster in 1966 and 1971. Returning to Nigeria, Abacha pursued further knowledge at the Command and Staff College in Jadi in 1976 and later at the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Study in Kuru, Jos, and that was in 1981. Notably, in 1982, he concluded his educational pursuit by participating in the Senior International Defense Course held in Monterey, California. Abacha's dedication to continuous learning and acquiring new skills allowed him to expand his expertise and broaden his horizon across various military institutions. Rise to grips in power Having risen through the rank of the Nigerian military, Abacha eventually became a highly influential figure in the government. In November 1993, he took power in a military coup, overthrowing the interim government that had been in place following the annulment of the presidential election held earlier that year. During his time in power, Abacha was known for his authoritarian rule and strong grip in the country. He implemented various controversial policies crack down on agitators and suppress all the political oppositions in the country. His administration was characterized by what has become a norm for military regimes, several of them in Nigeria history. Allegation of human rights abuse, corruption, and the suppression of democratic institutions. Abacha's tenure was marked by a centralization of power and the accumulation of vast wealth by him and his family. It is estimated that billions of dollars were embezzled from the Nigerian treasury during his rule. At the same time, he faced many international condemnation and sanction from several countries due to his political action. What defined his leadership? General Sani Abacha's leadership was defined by several key factors that left a lasting impact on Nigeria. These defining characteristics shaped his regime and contributed to the controversies surrounding his rule. Here are some key elements for your consideration. Authoritarian rule. Abacha's leadership style was marked by a strong authoritarian approach. 
He wielded extensive power and control over the government, military, and key institutions in the country. Political activists, journalists, and opposition figures were often subjected to harassment, arbitrary arrest, and even violence. His regime was characterized by a centralization of authority with decision primarily emanating from him. Alleged human rights abuses During Abacha's tenure, numerous allegations of human rights abuses surfaced. Report of torture, extrajudiciary killing, and the silence of critics were prevalent, painting a grim picture of the state of human rights under his regime. These abuses contributed to the international condemnation of his leadership. Corruption and embezzlement One of the defining features of Abacha's leadership was the rampant corruption and embezzlement of state's funds. It is estimated that billions of dollars were siphoned off the Nigerian treasury during his rule, leading to the economic setback and the loss of public trust. Abacha and his associates were accused of amassing significant personal wealth at the expense of the Nigerian people. Stability and strategic policies Despite the controversies surrounding his leadership, Abacha's supporters argue that he brought a sense of stability to Nigeria during a turbulent period. They credit him with implementing strategic economic policies that helped stabilize the economy and maintain infrastructural development. However, the legitimacy of this achievement remained debatable due to the corruption and human rights abuses overshadowing his regime. His promise of returning Nigeria to democracy Despite numerous pledges to usher in a return to democratic governance in Nigeria, General Sani Abacha deviated from his promise and instead employed on democratic measure to his regime. Notably, he imposed a ban on all former political activists, purged a significant number of military personnel, extended control over the media, and established a personal security force consisting of approximately 3,000 individuals. That was obviously a waste of public funds for personal interest, while a large portion of the Nigerian population remained in penury. Why publicly supporting regional initiatives like the Economic Community of West African State ECOWAS, and its military wing, the ECOWAS Monetary Group, also known as ECOMOC, in their endeavor to restore democracy in Liberia and Sierra Leone, Abacha harshly suppressed political activists within Nigeria itself. This included the imprisonment of prominent figures such as Moshuda Abiola, the winner of the Arnold 1993 presidential election. And Olusegun Obasanjo, a former military leader. Additionally, acclaimed Nigerian Nobel laureate Wolesu Ika faced treason charges, despite having chosen to leave the country voluntarily. One of Abacha's most infamous actions involved the imprisonment, trial, and subsequent execution for treason of Kensaro Wiwa and other activists from the Ogone community. This individual had raised concern over the environmental exploitation perpetrated by multinational petroleum companies operating in their region. So General Sani Abacha completely strayed from his initial commitment to restoring democracy. Instead, he resorted to all democratic practices. His suppression of political opposition, imprisonment of prominent figure, and brutal military action against dissident cast a dark shadow over Nigeria's democratic aspiration during his tenure. His death and legacy General Sani Abacha died suddenly on June 8, 1998, at the age of 54. The circumstances surrounding his death remain a subject of speculation, with some sources claiming he died of a heart attack and others suggesting foul play. After his death, Nigeria transitioned to civilian rule an effort had been made to recover the fund stolen during his regime. General Sani Abacha's true legacy are a subject of ongoing debate and contention. Abacha regime left a legacy of authoritarian rule and the suppression of democratic institutions in Nigeria. His strong-handed approach and containment of civil liberty hindered the growth of democratic practices and institutions, impacting Nigerian political leadership 
for years to come. Regional engagement and Pan-Africanism Abacha actively engaged in regional and Pan-African affairs, playing a role in resolving conflict and advocating for African economic integration. His involvement in regional peacekeeping effort left a mark on Nigerian foreign policy and demonstrated the country's aspiration for leadership on the African continent. I repeat that General Sani Abacha's legacy remained a mixture of negative and contested aspects, such as authoritarian rule, human rights abuses, and widespread corruption, along with certain infrastructural and regional engagement. These legacies continue to shape the Nigerian political, social, and economic landscape, highlighting the ongoing challenges faced in addressing the negative consequences of its regime while striving for progress and development. subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate and review Overhead Podcast and share with your friends who might need it. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you in the next episode.